Hi, it's Matthew Links, and welcome to this short presentation on an approach to the oncology long case. Long cases can be conceived of being of three stages, an assessment, followed by a synthesis, and then presentation. And we tend to present this as a linear process, but we know in reality that's not the case. In real life, what people do is that they go back after the synthesis to think about what extra information you need to make this decision. And your long case practice can reflect this, either in the last five minutes with the patient to go back and ask those key questions, or alternatively in the presentation to find ways of asking for the information you need to make a decision. It's a common error for trainees to make decisions without having the information. So the learning objectives today are to learn some different frameworks that you can use. And frameworks support and organise your thinking about a long case. Secondly, to be able to match problems with strategies for solving them. And finally, to identify some of the key aspects that you can put forward as part of your plan for a therapeutic relationship with the patient, an important objective. So the first frame to discuss is the big picture or what a typical oncology formulation looks like. And this typically would have five components. A histological diagnosis staging, physiological staging, the response to treatment and finally an idea of the person. Now by physiological staging I mean those comorbidities or assessments of function that impact upon the patient's ability to cope with any cancer treatment. This might be a comorbidity or it might be objective measurement of organ such as renal or hepatic reserve. And by the person I mean not only those psychosocial aspects of their coping with cancer but a genuine idea of who this person is. An oncology plan can be looked at again through five components. You may need to do some targeted investigation, but the main part of most um, cancer plans is going to be the treat definitive treatment against the cancer. And to do this, you might need to get advice and discuss it at an MDT, and you need to consider all modalities of care. And this is a critical part, but it's not the whole plan. It's important that you consider a supportive care plan that deals with physical and psychological aspects, a communication plan, and it's also important that you are always thinking ahead. So oncology is about decisions. So the question I would ask is what's the decision? And then what's the information that I need to be able to make this decision? Now there's a variety of tools that you can ask for in order to give you the information you need. It's very important to review the pathology and the radiology to get an idea of exactly what tumour you're treating and what sites of disease are involved. Now, if a patient has a comorbidity, you might need to assess that in order to see how it impacts on treatment. So if there's a question whether the coronary artery disease impacts on their fitness for chemotherapy, you might need to assess their coronary artery disease. Now, if you don't know what the treatment is likely to be for this type of cancer, you can always ask to consult guidelines. And this is a helpful suggestion to offer to show that although you don't know, you know where to look. You can also offer to discuss in a multidisciplinary clinic. And in fact, I would always ask to discuss in MDT or get opinions from appropriate experts. And finally, an important part of all these decisions is patient values and preferences. And you may not have established this within the 40 minutes allocated to you. So it's very appropriate to suggest a targeted discussion with a patient around these issues or perhaps a family conference. Now another way of looking at the oncology long cases is to look at the different types of cases. Some of them are definitely about decisions about anti-cancer treatment. Some of them about supporting the patient through side effects or symptoms. Some cases the treatment has already been given and this fits within what we would call a survivorship framework. 
And the final category of cases are those in which the case is really a diagnostic dilemma about diagnosing a particular problem. So if you ask what the decision is for each of these different types of cases, you'll get a different answer. So the decision for a newly diagnosed cancer is what's the best treatment. And in this case, the things that will give you extra information are particularly information about patient preferences, comorbidities, and discussion in the MDT. If the problem is about getting side effects, then the focus is really about should I stop or change? And in this case, the critical information is the severity of the side effect, its functional impairment, the aim of treatment, what the patient's preferences are, and how it impacts on their lifestyle, as well as what alternatives are there for treatment. If the question's coping with survival or palliative care, then again, there are different decisions to make and different information becomes critical, particularly around how this has been managed previously, what worked and what didn't work. Now, looking at cancer decisions as being a type of evidence-based medicine is a helpful way of thinking about key decisions. So the framework I would use would be three steps. The first step is to ask yourself, what is the evidence-based medicine standard of care? The, and this will depend upon the stage, histological type, line of treatment. The second question is, how does this apply to the patient in front of me? The critical information here is their performance status, their comorbidities, their prior treatment experience, preferences, and practical logistic issues. And the final step is one of shared decision-making or negotiation. Will the patient accept this degree of risk or benefit in order to go ahead with treatment? And in all these stages, multidisciplinary team input is helpful. And the final frame I would get you to consider is the patient as a person. You really want to present a person with cancer, not the cancer. And it's a common error that trainees will present a case such that you have no idea who the person with all these diseases is. In order to not do this, there are a few things you can do. The first is to really concentrate on the connection in between the functional impact of the cancer or their treatment and what's important to the patient. So if it's playing golf, how does their disease affect playing golf or looking after the grandkids or whatever. Other aspects that individualise the illness are the meaning of it for the patient, what their goals are, the family support they have and the impact on the family. And it's always good to ask people if they have any achievements that they are particularly proud of. Now one important aspect and really the main part of the support that we offer patients is our relationship with them. You can't outsource this to social work. So being able to talk about a therapeutic relationship is critical. There are, here are a few guidelines from the literature about strategies for creating a therapeutic um, relationship. And it's worthwhile being able to talk about these in the long case and offer them as suggestions. There are also some particular manoeuvres that you can use to be therapeutic in difficult situations, such as the patient who refuses treatment or inappropriately seeks treatment, or the family that doesn't want their father to know that he's got cancer. In these sorts of situations where your relationship is therapeutic, you can use these strategies to help. And again, it's important to be able to talk about these in a long case situation and show the examiners that you can construct a therapeutic relationship to deal with these problems. So that's it. The key points are to identify the decision, bring the information you need in order to make that, integrate pathology, symptoms and management, think holistically, think ahead, and finally be a person, not a machine. And finally, I would recommend these references the, um, that talk about key issues of survivorship, therapeutic relationship and discussion about patient preferences. Thank you and good luck.